Lorcha. They didn't finish telling us about the propagation. Keep going. It's interesting. So, eons can die, huh? Weird. I thought they were invincible. Okay, when... What happened between... When this discussion start? <laughs> there is no true invincibility or immortality in the world. Such exaggerations are born of the perspectives of ordinary beings. Nonetheless, ordinary beings could not have orchestrated the fall of the propagation. That eon was slain at the hands of another eon. Okay, Otto. I really have a bad vibe with him. I'm not sure he's gonna be some kind of bad guy or a Naruto party. I really don't know. I don't understand. They're all eons. Why do they want to fight? You... Are you really from the Sienjo? Other eons aside, surely you must know the story of Lan and Yaosha. Isn't destroying the Eon Yaosha the Alliance's cherished aim? Of course I know. Well, I, I know a little. My mom made me practice with swords all day. I, I didn't really go to school. In that case, let's just change the subject. If you don't know about the feud between the hunt and the abundance, I'm afraid there's just too much to explain. Oh, the abundance. So that's why we have to do that whole side quest? Fine. How's this for a subject? What's in the box? Oh, this one? <laughs> it's a casket. More commonly known as a coffin. It's for containing the remains of the deceased. Really, Otto? That little race red tracks. The deceased? Aren't you a merchant? Yes, indeed. This is just part of my job. I was asked to deliver this coffin to the Xianzhou. Ah, I'd quite forgotten. For long life species, death is probably a distant concept. Nope. The Cloud Knights spend a lot of time on the battlefield. Death is a common occurrence. It's just... We don't put bodies in boxes, uh, coffins. In the Sienjo, people go to the Hall of Karma in the Ten Lords Commission and consecrate the names and jade abacuses of the dead. That's our way of saying goodbye. The Foxians and the Vidyodora have their own ceremonies. Foxian soldiers place their dead in star's gifts and then let them drift out into the stars. They call it the returning. As for the Vidyodora, they're more mysterious. They say that when a Vidyodora is very old or has a fatal injury, they turn into an egg that looks like a pearl. And when the shell breaks, they come out looking young again. My mom calls the Vidyodora Long Scions. When I was young, she told me stories of how the Vidyodora could turn into dragons. And I don't know if that's true. What do you know? Silent but deathly speaks. Your mother is right. The Vidyodora are long scions. They are descendants of the Eon of Permanence. That was why some, but not all, could turn into dragons. Okay, hear me out. We kinda know that he's gonna become a dragon. And I think he's gonna change path with the Permanence. Wait, is Permanence one of the paths we have now? 
I think so. But I think there are more perks that are now available to play. But if permanents are dragon, you already know my answer. The power was a rare inheritance. Passed down only to those who could successfully complete numerous rites and challenges. For the inheritor, it was hard to say whether it was a blessing or a curse. Ah, I've heard the story of Long the Permanence and their descendants. Many myths and legends praise the Eon for a rich and immortal life. But for some reason, the Eon disappeared among the stars without a trace. Almost as if they had never existed, leaving only their descendants. Every life has its limit. Even the Eons are not truly immortal and will eventually reach the end of their lives. Uh... Let me ask you one more question. Do you know the person in the coffin? <laughs> yes. Wait, there's something inside? I thought it was empty. A friend? No. So, uh... The sweetheart? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Miss, whatever gave you that impression? The individual in the coffin is neither friend nor relative. We met only once. By chance, I made someone a promise, and so I have to run this errand. Let's leave it at that, shall we? I think we've all had enough rest. Oh, come on, let me look at Otto. Okay, we're gonna look at her. So, yeah, this is from Honkai Impact Turtle, too. Okay, I guess we still, still try to catch up with the game. Who is that? Is that a new character? Silent but deadly. Locha, let's charge in together. If we take them out quickly, we can rescue the girl. <laughs> what happened to us letting you handle it? I've only got two hands. Please, I'll wangle you a prize for your bravery or something when it's all over. Enough. Let's go. Now I can actually look at you. Yeah, I cannot see too much, but yeah, this is auto. Want to see what I can do? Interesting conflict. Take this! Arise, Phoenix! We talk about Dion's, but we never try to explain what's her deal with the chicken. Divinity. You're the best. Repay. 
Eternal sleep is not the end. <laughs> Nothing major. Fighting is meaningless. Wait, what was? Wait, was? Wait, is this his? Uh, he and that was his ultimate? see any blood so I, I thought you were okay you're a puppet my motor is broken I can't move are you a cloud knight good take me to the realm keeping commission I uh Locha, silent but deadly. I'm afraid we have to delay things again. This lady is one of the judges of the Ten Lords Commission. As a Cloud Knight, I must prioritize her orders. I'm sorry. If I'd known, I wouldn't have got you to come with me. You'd probably be there by now if you'd gone by yourself. I happen to have some medical knowledge. Perhaps I can treat the young lady's injuries. She's a robot, not oh, a human. She's a puppet. I think we should just take her to the Realm Keeping Commission. Don't worry, Miss Sushang. Leave it to me. You might get an aching or numbing sensation, but it shouldn't be too painful. Do you think you can hold still? Okay, Otto, what are you doing? It won't work. My body is mechanical, not flesh and blood. Be it mechanical or organic, we're still dealing with composite substances. I just hope you'll tolerate my methods. <sighs> huh. Curious. Uh, how... Oh, what kind of... Medical knowledge is this? Abundance. Hmm. Oh. I think I have. I guess who's him? He's the abundance leader, to say, to the cult. Oh boy. Hmm. Very good. We uh. No longer need to return to the Realm Keeping Commission. The mission continues. As a judge in the employ of the Ten Lords Commission, I am forbidden from interfering in the affairs of outsiders. However, seeing as you came to my aid, a word of advice. Leave as soon as possible. I came to address the root of our crisis by arresting a fugitive, a Stellaron hunter. This villain possesses exceptional swordsmanship and wields a divine weapon. They are extremely dangerous. <laughs> if it hadn't been for a strange accident, my wake span might have been cut short. Strange... accident? Come with me. Okay, what's her deal? I've never seen anything like it. I'm game. We may said that for a second. You know, even eons can be killed. And we back here. <laughs> Are you kidding? That's not what we want. I just want to tell stories from the past. Stories about eons that have fallen. 
Mulan, the permanence, Drilla, the beauty, Dana, the order, Tazerant, the propagation, Akivili, the trailblaze. Hmm? Wait, so these are actually dead? I don't know, I think this is like in games when they are kind of dead, but new people took the roles to see. Do I feel they're gonna reborn or something? These names were once known all over the universe. And now they've all but disappeared, leaving behind only masterless paths. And currently, there are three ways an eon can perish known to humanity. One, paths with overlapping concepts will eventually collide. And the broader path will engulf the narrower one. That's how Anna the Order was assimilated by Shipe the Harmony. Two, in a war between eons, the stronger side will annihilate the weaker one. That's how Tazerant the Propagation fell. Under the guidance of the hunt, the Sienjo Alliance travels the universe exterminating abominations cultivated by the Abundance. So, the Sienjo too are engaged in this process. As far as I know, the predecessors of the Alliance were the Elixir Seekers. They searched for Yaosher and longed for the blessing of immortality. When they eventually found the Aeon, they received the blessing that did indeed prevent death, the Ambrosial Arbor. But immortality turned out to be a curse for the Sienjo. That's when the hunt appeared, firing an arrow and felling the Ambrosial Arbor. Ever since, the Alliance has followed the hunt in pursuit of Yaoshu, erasing the curse of immortality from the universe along the way. What do you think? Fascinating stories, no? <laughs> They're the kind of stories that folks on the straight and narrow would never tell you. Hold on. Any minute now. Huh? <laughs> it's begun. What now? Hmm. Oh boy. Let's go, Blady. Two more places to visit. <laughs> Where are you guys going? Uh, did Kafka escape? Uh, how are we gonna explain this to the Master Diviner? Um, okay, that was something. Did they fail to a ship or something? Do she have plans to the next planet or... Oh boy. They're re... I didn't expect to actually go that far already with the story. If what she said is true, we won't have to explain anything. She speaks! Hey, did she brainwash you? Kinda. Wasn't this the dead tree Ching Chue showed us earlier? How did it grow all of a sudden? Oh, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Even the long-lived might not witness something like this in their lifetime. I'm so lucky. Such extraordinary energy. 
It's the Stellaron. Mr. Yang, do you mean the Stellaron is making the Ambrosial Arbor grow? Yes, the Stellaron the Cloud Knights are searching for must be causing this anomaly. Unless Kafka deceived the Matrix of Prescience. Stay calm, Diviner Fool. The Matrix of Prescience does not lie. The logic you have laid out concerning Kafka makes sense. It has helped me to fill in another piece of the puzzle. I agree there is a hostile external force at work on the Lofu. The Stellaron didn't appear out of thin air. Someone managed to sneak it onto the ship. As for the culprits behind the Lofu's internal strife, I believe we are dealing with the so-called Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, that shadowy organization of the denizens of abundance. Kafka's revelations confirm my suspicions. You... General, when did you have these suspicions? The moment the planter of the Stellaron revealed himself. The Sienjo has the blessing of the Rainbow Arbiter, and only another Eon Emanator would be capable of sneaking onto this ship without my knowing. We are dealing with an external threat. The Stellaron corrosion continues to flood into the ship. And yet it bypassed both the seat of divine foresight and the shackling prison. There is forethought here. Our enemy must have had access to Lafu intelligence for things to unfold in this way. It is evident now. The Stellaron hunters aren't the ones behind the curtain. No. As soon as I set eyes on Blade, it was clear to me. But why is he here? And why did he draw the Astral Express? <laughs> that piece of the puzzle still eludes me. Nevertheless, Lady Fu, your intel means the puzzle is more complete than it was before. <laughs> These Stellaron hunters are a captivating group. Such lengths to get the Sienjo and the Express onto the same track. <laughs> Who would have believed it? General, we must retain all urgency. The Ambrosial Arbor. It's the Stellaron. No need to search high and low. The traitors have planted it in the Ambrosial Arbor's delve, thereby causing the tree to grow once again. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus couldn't hold off any longer. Every crisis is a turning point. A problem is easier to resolve when you know where it lies. Am I coming up with a plan again? Of course. I'm sure you have a countermeasure at the ready, Master Diviner. From my perspective, convening the Cloud Knights is our immediate priority. We must head into the roots of the Ambrosial Arbor, expel the Stellaron spirits, and prevent the Arbor's resurrection. Mmm, as ever the Master Diviner's Omnisha provides for the fastest solution. However, sometimes speed is not everything. I have known the Stellaron's location for a while now. So why have I held back our forces? General? Well? You're a scoundrel. Maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Pulling up the grass requires removing the roots. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus have chosen to make their move now. Which means the Cloud Knights have the situation under control, and the traders have run out of patience. Now is the time to capture them all in one fell swoop. You've been sitting on that this whole time? How will you justify the losses if something goes wrong, General? Please, Lady Fu. I still have forces to deploy. We were in need of extra hands, and the Stellaron Hunters were kind enough to bring us together with the Astral Express. How could I look the other way? Oh, that massive tree has suddenly sprung to life! It's my fault. I had higher expectations of the General. Please! We can't keep 
keep getting them to do everything for us. Since when did we run out of people on the Law Fu? You... Why are you staring at me? Do I need to remind you, General, that the Ambrosial Arbor's access point is a closely guarded secret? Allowing outworlders would be... A violation of the rules and regulations. I would like to remind you, Lady Fu, that the Sienjo comes before its rules and regulations, all the more so in times of crisis. As such, I am about to make a decision that runs counter to those rules and regulations. Oh, uh, decisions plural. <laughs> what a rare pleasure. Lady Fu, I hereby issue you with the military tally. The Cloud Knights will be under your control. You will act in concert with the other forces in the approach to the Ambrosial Arbor through the Alchemy Commission Delve. Under... my control? You've been eager to discover for yourself what it is to be a general, have you not? You've never given me the opportunity, and now suddenly... <clears throat> Understood. As you wish. As for our astral friends, I hereby formally welcome you all to join our operation to seal the Stellaron. Lady Fu will deploy the Cloud Knights, but I would like you to set off in advance. Take a shortcut through the Artisanship Commission, and convene with Lady Fu further down the line. This is no order, honored guests. I am merely stating what needs to be done, should you wish to help us. You've never really seen us as outsiders, huh? Miss Tingyun, I would like you to continue to serve as a guide for our astral friends. Oh, of course, General. I am duty-bound. I guess we close the engine. Oh, I wonder what did I complete? 